In this video, we're going to look at properties of inverse functions. Let's revisit our socks and shoes function. So the function f said, put on a sock, put on a shoe, tie the shoe. We were taking our bare foot as an input and outputting a dressed foot. F inverse, which is written F superscript negative one, says untie the shoe, take off the shoe, take off the sock. In this case, we were inputting a dressed foot and outputting a bare foot. If we do the forward composition of these two functions, in other words, F left parentheses, F inverse left parentheses, dressed foot, right paren, right paren. We're doing the composition of f with f inverse. Well, if we take our dressed foot and process it through the function f inverse, then what we get out is a bare foot. So now we would do f of a bare foot. And if we process a bare foot through the function f, we would put on a sock, put on a shoe, tie the shoe, and we would end up back with a dressed foot. So in this case, what we input if we go through the inverse and then the function, we get out the same exact thing that we put in. Let's do the backwards composition. So let's do F inverse of left parentheses, F of left parentheses, barefoot, right paren, right paren. So now the inverse function composed of the function. When I take the barefoot and process it through the function F, I put on a sock, put on a shoe, tie the shoe, what I end up with is a dressed foot. So now I have F inverse, and I'm going to replace f of barefoot with dressed foot. Now I need to process f inverse of dressed foot. And so I take the dressed foot, I untie the shoe, take off the shoe, take off the sock, and what I end up with is a barefoot. And again, you can see that the input was barefoot, the output is barefoot after we go through the function and its inverse. This actually leads us to the first property of inverse functions. If functions are inverses, then their composition in either direction returns the input, whatever it was. So the composition returns the input. I'm going to highlight those to show you they're important. Now in mathematical notation, if we use f and f inverse, that's f superscript negative 1, then basically we're saying that f of f inverse of y equals y, and f inverse of f of x equals x. Notice that I did use different variables for that, just to avoid the confusion that I'm always using the same input. I'm not using the same input. It wouldn't actually make sense to start with the opposite inputs. For example, if I went to my function f and put in a dressed foot, then F would say, put on a sock, put on a shoe, and tie the shoe. I'd be putting on a second sock and a second shoe over the sock and shoe I already had. So that wouldn't make sense. So we want to be careful that we're not always using the exact same input here, which is why I've used both X and Y in this notation. Let's try this on a mathematical function. I claim that F of X equals 3X plus 2, and f inverse of y equals y minus 2 all over 3 are inverses of each other. Let's see by taking the forward composition and the backwards composition. The forwards composition would be f left paren f superscript negative 1 left paren y right paren right paren. In other words, f of f inverse of y. Let's take f inverse of y and plug it in as our input. 2f. Let me just rewrite this first. I'm finding f of, and then a fraction bar in the numerator, y minus 2, in the denominator, 3, and then close the paren. So f of the fraction y minus 2 over 3 gives us what? Well, now I'm plugging that in to the x in f of x. That gives me 3 times left paren fraction bar y minus 2 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator, right paren, and then plus 2. I'm simply plugging in the expression y minus 2 all over 3 into the function 3x plus 2. This gives us uh, 3 times y minus 2 over 3. The 3s will cancel, giving us y minus 2. And then we still have that plus 2 on the outside. y minus 2 plus 2 is just y. So in this case, the input was y and the output was y. So far, so good. The forward composition checks out. Let's try the backwards composition. So f inverse of f of x, or 
f superscript negative 1, left paren, f, left paren, x, right paren, right paren. We're going to start by plugging f of x into the function f inverse. Let's just rewrite that to start. That's f inverse of, and then f of x is 3x plus 2. We're plugging 3x plus 2 into f inverse. f inverse is y minus 2 over 3, so let's just make a fraction bar with a space for the y minus 2 all over 3, and in the space for the y I'm going to put that f of x of 3x plus 2. Now let's simplify. In the numerator I have left paren 3x plus 2 right paren minus 2. Well the parentheses don't really matter, so I have 3x plus 2 minus 2 or just 3x. In the denominator I have 3. So the 3 is reduced to make 1, and I just end up with x. And notice that our input for this one was x, and our output for this one is x. So this tells us that, in fact, the forward composition and the backwards composition have that property where when we compose the function with its inverse, we get out the input again. For the next problem, we're going to prove that two functions, f and g, are inverses. f of x is a fraction, in the numerator it's x plus 4, in the denominator it's 3, g of y equals 3y minus 4. To do this we want to do both the forward and backwards compositions. It actually doesn't matter which one you consider to be which as long as you do both to check. So we want to do both f of g of y and g of f of x. Now I'm simply choosing my variable based on which variable normally goes with f and g. So f normally has an x, so f of x is sitting on the inside, and g normally has a y, so g of y is sitting on the inside. All right, let's start with f of g of y. Let's first just rewrite with the g of y in place. So this is really f of 3y minus 4. We'll take our function f, which is a fraction, with x plus 4 on the top, so I'm going to leave the x blank for a second and put something plus 4, and then the denominator I'm going to put 3. And the something that goes on top is 3y minus 4. So now in the numerator I have 3y minus 4 plus 4, which is just 3y, and in the denominator I have 3, and so the 3's reduced leaving me with y. You can see that the input, y, equals the output y. Okay, let's try g of f of x. Let's first just rewrite. So we have g of f of x, which is the fraction x plus 4 in the numerator over 3 in the denominator. Now let's go ahead and plug in x plus 4 over 3 to the function g. The function g is 3 times y, so that's 3 times x plus 4 over 3 in parentheses, and then minus 4 to the side. Well, 3 times the fraction x plus 4 all over 3, the 3's will reduce, making 1, and we'll be left with x plus 4 minus 4, which is just x. If all has gone well, that output is equal to the input, and it is. So, in this case, we've proven that the functions f and g are inverses. Now, I'd like you to try the next one. So, you're going to decide whether these two functions are or are not inverses. The functions are f of x equals 5x minus 2, and g of y equals y over 5, and then outside of the fraction, minus 2. Pause the video, give it a try. All right, we're back. Let's go ahead and try both of these compositions. So we'll try f of g of y and g of f of x. Now, for these to be inverses of each other, both of these have to work out to be the input. Let's start with f of g of y. We'll first rewrite that as f of, and then in parentheses, y over 5, out of the fraction, minus 2, close the parentheses. So we're plugging in y over 5 minus 2 into f of x. So that's going to be 5 times, left parentheses, y over 5 outside the fraction minus 2, right parentheses, and then we still have a minus 2 on the outside. Let's do the distribution. So 5 times y over 5 would just be y. 5 times negative 2 would be negative 10, and then we would have the negative 2 on the outside. If we simplify y minus 10 minus 2, we get y minus 12. And that doesn't actually look good because my input was y and my output is y minus 12. 
which tells me this does not look good for us. Let's just check that other one, see if it comes out okay. Maybe we made a, an error here and we need to be a little bit more careful. Or maybe you did the other one first and you want to see how it turns out. So g of f of x would be g of, and then f of x is 5x minus 2. We're going to plug 5x minus 2 into the function g of y. That means we'll do, instead of y over 5, we'll have 5x minus 2 over 5, and then off to the side of that fraction, minus 2. Now to simplify this, we have to break up the fraction 5x minus 2 all over 5 to be 5x over 5 minus 2 over 5, and then we still have the minus 2. Well, 5x over 5 does reduce to be x, so now we have x minus 2 fifths minus 10 fifths, which would be x minus 12 fifths. And again, this output, x minus 12 fifths, does not match this input of x. So we can definitely guarantee that these are not inverses of each other. Now, you don't have to do both compositions if your first one fails, but I like to do both just to make sure that, you know, if the second one comes out okay, I might go back and check for a math error in the first one just to double check. I'm going to show you a couple other properties that would help you double check as well.